In the mid-1930s, the British decided that they could actually improve on the SMLE's design. So they came up with what they call the number four Mark I. Now this particular model that I'm going to be showing is a number four Mark I-T. I'll explain the difference in a minute. But it was actually manufactured from 1941 to 1960. Again, a long production period. It was made in Britain, certainly, but you notice that it was also made by the Savage Arms Company in the United States. In addition, it was made in Canada at the Long Branch factory. The T designation was actually the designation for the sniper rifle version. You'll see that they almost made five million of these number four Mark I's. But out of that five million, only 25,000 of them were made in the sniper version. They would select rifles at the factory for accuracy, and then they would actually send the factory, uh, the, the rifles, to the Holland and Holland gun firm in London. And the Holland and Holland company actually converted these, one by one, by hand, to the sniper version. Very, very high quality accurate weapons, extremely rugged. One of the big differences also between the number one Mark IV or III and the number four Mark I is the bayonet. This is the earlier bayonet and when Britain decided to simplify things they went to a spike bayonet. So big, big difference. The soldiers weren't crazy about these because these could be used for a variety of uh, different things. They could dig with them, open cans with them, so on and so forth. These were basically good for one thing, actually two. You could use them for tent pegs. <laughs> the next rifle we're going to talk about is the number five Mark I. Toward the end of the war, the uh, uh, Brits decided they needed a short carbine to use in the jungle environments in Southeast Asia. So they did come up with this short version right here. And they had several problems. They actually came out with it in 1945. So it was only made from 1945 to 1947. Like most carbines that were chambered for the full power rounds, the muzzle blast and the recoil was terrific. The troops were not crazy about this, but it suffered a more serious problem, something that they never tracked down exactly why it was happening. They were never able to fix it. This rifle exhibited a trait called the Wandering Zero. You could take this rifle to the range and zero it, get the uh, sights lined up, bullet impact right, go back the next day, fire it again, and it would have a totally different zero. They never figured out why that happened, so they ended up dropping the rifle. Now to get back to the slide I just had up, on all the Savage produced uh, number four Mark I's, we had that marking right there, U.S. property. Now why in the world, if Savage was building rifles for Britain, would they have that marked on the rifle? The reason was these rifles were built prior to the U.S. entering World War II, and officially the United States was a neutral country. So being neutral, we could only lend or lease that ought to ring a bell, the Lend Lease Act, these rifles to the British. So to make it abundantly clear to the Germans that we weren't siding with the British, we marked them U.S. property. 